Welcome. This is a time lapse with commentary of creating a 3D attic in Blender with some volumetric lighting and fog. The scene you see right here is rendered with EV, which renders much faster than cycles. I created this scene because I wanted to learn how to create a 3D background for my videos that, that allows me to use different camera angles in the same scene. My next video I will cover this part. But let's create the attic first. First, I'm creating a human sized cylinder for reference. Next, I'm creating a plane that will be the floor of the attic. In edit mode, I subdivide the floor with Ctrl R so I can extend one side. If you want to create your own, find a good reference image. In my case, I use the attic from the We Have a Ghost movie. To create the walls, I select the other edges. And with Shift D, I duplicate the edge and separate it by pressing P. Now I can extrude the edge by selecting E and Z to lock it on the vertical axis. To create the roof, I select and separate the edges on one side and add the mirror modifier to get the opposing side as well. Here is a good idea to apply all transforms with Ctrl A to make sure the other side is positioned correctly. Then extrude with E and Z. Enable clipping on the modifier and bring the edges together with G, Y. Same thing for this part, separate and extrude up. Then copy and paste the height and fix the vertical alignment. Now I'll extrude the front part of the roof and delete the bottom vertices. Then select the edges and press F to fill the face. Fix the alignment with the roof in both directions for all the points. There's one extra plane, so I'll delete it. Lastly, let's close the wall by selecting the edge and pressing F. To make it look a little more like an attic, I'll change the viewport shading to render it with EV. Next, it's time to create an octagonal window. So I add a cylinder with Shift A and change the vertices to 8. Then simply align the cylinder with the window, rotate it and add a Boolean modifier on the wall and on the roof in difference mode and select the cylinder as the target object. Let's do the same with the cube to make a smaller window on the top. Next, I'm adjusting the camera settings to match the focal length of my smartphone. As the layout is complete, I can hide the dummy cylinder and start creating the wooden structure to give the attic more detail. This process is similar like creating the walls. I first separate one edge and then extrude it on two axes to create beams and ribs or whatever you call them. It's also a good idea to name the elements to make the modeling easier. I'll start by creating the rafters and use the array modifier and then the mirror modifier to add them on the other side twice. More rafters on this side following the same process. Forgive me as this is not an accurate architectural design as that's not the purpose here. Then the vertical beams between the wall and roof. At this point, I want to add some light, so in the world settings, I change the color of the sky texture and play with the parameters to get something I like. Same with the color of the lamp to get a warmer atmosphere. Then more beams. Connect the edges and fill the faces. Now one rafter on the corner, mirror modifier and some manual adjustment to make them flush. Next I add some columns on the wall with array and mirror modifier. Same on this part and the other wall.
Here, I'll apply the modifier and extend the faces to reach the ceiling. I somehow screwed this up, so I need to manually align the columns with the back wall. Now I can create the opening for a door by selecting the wall and with Ctrl R, cut it twice, separate the face, rename, resize and extrude. Let's add some detail by subdivision and inset the faces by pressing the key I twice. Then the small inset, select it and move it inside to create a crease. To create the frame, select the edges, separate and extrude. I'll use solidify modifier to give it some thickness. Rotate the door and align it correctly with the doorway. Now I'll create a lamp from a cylinder by a series of extrusions, insets and scaling in edit mode. Then I'll add a UV sphere to create a bulb. Scale down, select the bottom part and extrude to make it resemble a light bulb. Move it down in the socket. Last adjustment and then I move it to the final location. Right click, cursor to select, select the light, snap selection to cursor. Don't worry about the bulb for now, I'll come back to it later. To make the shadow softer, I'll change the radius to 1 meter. At this point, I'm still thinking making the scene with cycles, so I'm playing with the sun settings. If you have a great RTX GPU, you can use cycles. Later on, I change to EV to make it more bearable for my RTX 2060. Moving forward, it's time to create some textures. I created some seamless textures with Invoke AI using Stable Diffusion, which looked great. I add the textures in the shader editor by adding an image texture and pressing Ctrl T to add the little mapping helpers. Make sure you have Node Wrangler enabled in the plugins to do this. I scale down the texture in the mapping node to make it look like planks and then add Bump to make it look a little more realistic. Time to add the texture to the wall following the same pattern. Image, Ctrl T. As that doesn't work, I select the UV in edit mode and apply the smart UV project. This usually helps. Scale down and repeat the process on the columns. This texture is sideways, so we can change the rotation from the mapping node. Apply the same texture for the other columns and the beams and the rafters. For the back wall, I used the Smart UV project again. Same goes for the rafters and the support beams. Now I'll add a texture to the ceiling itself to make it look like paneling. I want to make the scene quite dark and old looking, so I'll add a mix node, color ramp and a mask grape texture to darken the walls. I like how it looks, so I'll simply select the nodes and copy and paste them on the other materials. Same with the floor, and let's also give the door a texture by mixing up Musgrave and Noise textures. Apply it to the frame, and then I'll create a frame also for the windows. I duplicate the cylinder, scale it, and use a Boolean modifier to cut out the middle. To give it a color, I apply a texture. And repeat the process on the smaller window, and change the texture finally to door, as it looks better. To add more details, I'm creating some shelves on the back wall. I select all the parts, press M for new collection and name it Rack. Give it a texture and from the Add menu, select Collection Instance, Rack. Here it's a good idea to move the cursor to World Origin and then add more instances to fill up the wall. Now, if I create a separator on the original, the instances will do the same. If you notice, part of the texture on the wall was rotated 90 degrees, so in the UV editor, I select that part and rotate it by pressing R and typing in 90. 
Here I'm playing with the parameters to get a better look. This part is simply experimental to get the look you want. I also add a bump to the ceiling. Next, let's create a staircase that leads to the attic. I'm only using this scene inside the wall, so it doesn't matter how it looks from outside. Let's align a cube with the door, skew the shape, and delete the face in the doorway. For a simple texture, I'm using the break node and scale it big enough to make it look like some sort of paneling. We don't need to create stairs for the camera angles we're using, so I'll just create a handrail with a cylinder, align it with the staircase, and apply a texture. As my attic is supposed to be old, I'll create some holes on the roof by adding some rocks and using the boolean modifier on the ceiling to cut them out. To make it look like an attic, it needs cardboard boxes. I create them with a cube, cut out the top face, Add solidify modifier and add some simple deform to make them look less perfect. To get the right color, I check online for a hex code. And simply start duplicating the box to build a pile. The top window has a grill in my reference image, so I'll recreate that here with a simple plane, add an array and duplicate. And rotate to create the trellis. Moving on, let's add more lamps to the scene. So now I'm modeling a lampshade from a cylinder, much the same way I did before. Move it to a suitable place, duplicate, and move along the same axis. Apply a new texture, select a bulb, and add a new texture, and click Assign to apply it to the bulb. Add warm emission to make it bright. Same with the other. While doing bulbs, why not do the last one too? I'm sure you were waiting for that. In this part, I'm simply adjusting the lights and sun to see what settings look good. I'll add a wall on the right side and duplicate the lamp there. One of the rocks is ruining the texture for the ceiling, so I decide to delete it. The cardboard boxes are standing out too much, so I add some noise to them. To make the attic look foggy, I'm placing a big cube over it with volume scatter. But as I start testing how it looks by rendering some frames, I realize that the denoiser messes up the top part of the ceiling no matter how high settings I'm using. And if I turn the denoising off, the result is also horrible. Someone who knows how to use this correctly, please let me know in the comments. Next day, I decide to go with Eevee and try to replicate the look of cycles. I start by increasing the reflections on the floor. For light streaks, I try to create some volume shapes following the sun from the windows to the floor, but finally they don't show in EV, so we can skip that part. Again, tweak in the light settings and play with the world settings and the exposure and gamma under render properties. To create fog that works with EV, I found this video and followed the instructions to create the cube like before, 
but this time use principled volume, map range, and noise texture. Now the results are much better. One thing I don't like is how the light shines through the lampshade, so I'm trying different positions to reduce the effect. Then I turn the rafters darker as they stand out too much in the scene. Finally, the scene starts to look good. As an unimportant and optional last trick, I add some particles floating in the air to make them look like specks of dust. The results are okay-ish and will do for the purpose. Let's do a demo render and here is the final result. In the next video, I will figure out how to add myself on the scene and add some cool effects to it. You can watch it here.